Good morning. My name is Tim. I'm Nikki. And we're here to bring you the uh, good news for today for January 21st. And uh, our reading from uh, scripture today is from, taken from John chapter 4. Uh, in yesterday's good news, um, Pat Brown introduced the story of the Samaritan woman who was at the well uh, drawing water and Jesus came and asked her for a drink. And uh, so we're going to continue on from there. And because there are two of us and because we are... Uh, <laughs> We're either, well, I don't know what we are, <laughs> but we're, we're going to try and do this as a, a bit of a uh, play, if you like. So we're going to dramatize this a little bit, but it won't be very dramatic, trust us. <laughs> uh, we're going to read, uh, starting just a little bit before today's uh, scripture reading, which is John 4, chapter, or John chapter 4, verses 16 to 26, but we're going to start at verse 14 just to pick up the thread. Uh, I'm playing the part of Jesus. That's a very presumptuous thing to do, but uh, we decided Nikki is really not eligible to play that part, and I don't have a wig that I could wear. <laughs> so, Jesus starts off saying, But anyone who drinks the water that I'll give them won't ever be thirsty again. No, the water I'll give them will become a spring of water welling up to the life of God's new age. Sir, give me this water. Then I won't be thirsty anymore, and I won't have to come here to draw from the well. Well then, go and call your husband and come here. I haven't got a husband. You're telling me you haven't got a husband. The fact is, you've had five husbands, and the one you've got now isn't your husband. You were speaking the truth. Well, sir, I can see you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, and you say that Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you won't worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You worship what you don't know, we worship what we do know. Salvation, you see, is indeed from the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed it's here already, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes, that's the kind of worshipers the Father is looking for. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I know that Messiah is coming, the one they call the Anointed. When he comes... He'll tell us everything. I'm the one, the one speaking to you right now. This is the, the gospel, gospel of Christ. Thank you for uh, putting up with our little play. <laughs> uh, this is an interesting uh, bit of scripture, and I think I'm probably just going to make a, uh, a comment on a couple of things that struck me, and uh, but I would invite you to, to do likewise yourself. Um, this starts off with uh, Jesus just trying to describe to the woman the kind of water, quote unquote, that he offers. He says something which um, is probably, well, it's not, not just probably, but is not best taken literally. But she hears it literally. And uh, this is a common thing with, with Scripture. We just have to be careful as human beings to uh, not uh, to look for the, the true meaning and not just what's on the surface if we take it too literally. So he, he starts off saying that he'll give water that uh, she'll never be thirsty again. Well, that's, that's a, a, no, no wonder she says, well, if you can give me this water, that'd be great because then I won't have to come here to the well every day and, and draw water. And of course, that wasn't what he meant. But a little later on, she says, I, when, he, when he says that uh, he, he sort of tells her what he has no business knowing in a sense, but he knows because he's Christ. At least I wonder about that. I wondered how he... You know, if we get into uh, Christ knows everything or whatever, that can become 
a little bit of a pitfall too. So at any rate, one way or another, he knew that she had already had five husbands and the man she's living with now is not her husband. And, uh, and she says, I can see you're a prophet. So the note that I kind of made about that was that although she started off hearing what he was saying very literally, she's now beginning to get the idea, oh, he's a prophet. And then, of course, the, 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 the sentence in here that is a very important sentence is probably, it ought to be maybe one of the, if you were to collect the 20 or 25 most important verses in Scripture, perhaps this would be a candidate, where Jesus says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him, him in spirit and in truth. And uh, that's... Um, that's certainly, um, you know, the, the, in, in the Old Testament, the Jewish people were constantly being tempted to, to uh, adopt the idols of, uh, of the other countries and, and uh, peoples that they interacted with. Uh, but the, in, in the Old Testament, God, through the prophets, repeatedly tells them, don't make these images and bow down to them. Uh, and so this is a, a, very, a very pithy statement about that, the God's nature in that regard. And finally, uh, this ends with uh, Jesus declaring to the woman at the well that he in fact is the Messiah that they have all been waiting for. And that's, that's just an amazing uh, uh, revelation of Christ right there that he's saying yep you got it that's me <laughs> anyway uh, we hope that speaks to you one way or another and uh, I think he's going to pray I think just to close off and we'll, then we'll be on our way join me in prayer father we thank you that you are the only God and we worship you in spirit and in truth. And we ask that you teach us, teach us how to do this. Help us to daily worship you and uh, to recognize that you are uh, the one who quenches our thirst, our thirst for knowledge, our thirst for knowledge of you. We thank you for that and ask that you give us wisdom to be able to do this. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Have a yes. great week, and uh, we'll see you next time. And enjoy the weekend, and, and stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.